Let us tackle more calculations. So guys, this is our third part in the more revision series. If you haven't checked out part one and part two, be sure to do so because there's a little bit of introduction and explanation that makes everything else seem clear. So let us dive in. Our first question, D grams of potassium hydroxide were dissolved in distilled water to make 100 cubic centimeters of solution. 50 cubic centimeters of this solution required 50 cubic centimeters of 2 molar nitric 5 acid for complete neutralization. Calculate the mass D of potassium hydroxide. So we've been provided with the relative formula mass of potassium hydroxide as 56. Okay, so from the information that we've been provided with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize this information in a way that will make it easier for us to process whatever we've been told. So number one, we have D grams of potassium hydroxide. This simply means that we have an unknown mass of potassium hydroxide. So there's a certain mass of potassium hydroxide that was dissolved in water and then the solution made up to 100 cubic centimeters. Now out of this 100 cubic centimeters of solution, 50 cubic centimeters was taken and reacted with nitric acid. So what do we know about the nitric acid? We know its volume and its molarity, the volume of which is 50 cubic centimeters and a molarity of 2. Okay, so this is a neutralization reaction whereby you're having an acid and a base reacting to form a salt in water. As always, what is our first step going to be? Writing a balanced chemical equation. So there we have it. It's already balanced. And as you can clearly see, we have a mole ratio of 1 is to 1. 1 mole of potassium hydroxide reacts with 1 mole of nitric acid. So this simply means that whatever number of moles we find of potassium hydroxide and nitric acid, they are going to be the same. So the question is asking us for the mass of potassium hydroxide that was initially dissolved in water. But unfortunately, due to the limited information that we have at this point, we cannot directly calculate this mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the indirect route. We're going to start with the nitric acid. Why? Because the information we have on nitric acid is enough for us to calculate the moles of this acid. So we are going to start at that point, move backwards until we end up at our final destination where we are going to answer the question. So what steps are we going to take? They are as follow. Number one, we are going to determine the moles of nitric acid. Then we will determine the moles of potassium hydroxide using the mole ratio. And lastly, calculating the mass D of potassium hydroxide. So starting with the moles of nitric acid. What do we know of nitric acid? We know its volume and its molarity. And therefore we can use this formula to calculate the number of moles. So moles are given by molarity multiplied by volume over 1000. Our molarity is 2 multiplied by the volume 50 over 1000. This gives us the number of moles of nitric acid as 0 0.1. Next step, what about the moles of potassium hydroxide? Coming back to our balanced chemical equation. If you look at the equation, the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. So if the actual moles of nitric acid was 0 0.1, that means we are going to have the same number of moles for potassium hydroxide. So the number of moles of potassium hydroxide present in 50 cubic centimeters was 0 0.1. Now we need to find the moles that were present in 100 cubic centimeters. Remember, D grams were dissolved to form 100 cubic centimeters of solution, but only 50 cubic centimeters was used. So we are going to simply cross multiply. If 0.1 moles are present in 50 cubic centimeters, what about 100 cubic centimeters? So this gives us 0.2 moles. We are now ready for our last step, calculating the mass D of potassium hydroxide. So what is the molar mass of potassium hydroxide? 56. How do I know it's 56 grams? It's because of the RFM. So the RFM is 56. So that means one mole of potassium hydroxide is going to have a mass of 56 grams. Okay, how many moles do we have then? We have 0 0.2 moles. So if one mole is equivalent to 56, what about 0 0.2 moles? So 0 0.2 by 56 gives us a mass of 11.2 grams. So this was the mass of potassium hydroxide that was dissolved initially 
you know, in the D grams to form the 100 cubic centimeters of solution. Moving on to our next question, a hydrated salt has the following composition by mass. So a hydrated salt is simply a salt that contains water of crystallization. So we have iron 20.2, oxygen 23, sulfur 11.5% and water 45.3%. So this is the water of crystallization. We need to determine the formula of the hydrated salt. So we have been given the RMs of the following elements. Now, whenever you are asked for a question, you know, such a question on determining the formula, you need to have a table such as that. So you're going to paste in the elements involved, iron, sulfur, oxygen, and water is going to go in as a block. So we are going to have mass, molar mass, number of moles, mole ratio, and there. So next step, fill in the relevant details. Now, if you look at the information that we've been provided with, it's in percentage form. So I want you to imagine that instead of having the total as 100%, let's imagine it's 100 grams with iron being 20.2 grams, sulfur 11.5, oxygen 23, and lastly, water as 45.3 grams. Okay, now molar mass. Molar mass, yeah. It's equivalent to the RMs. So iron is 56, sulfur is 32, oxygen is 16, and water is 18. Where is the 18 coming from? Remember, we have one oxygen atom, that's 16, two hydrogen atoms with each having the RM of 1. So 1 by 2 plus 16 gives us 18. Our next step, calculating the number of moles. So we are going to use this formula. Moles is given by mass over the molar mass. Do we know the mass? Yes. Molar mass? Yes. That is safi. So just paste in the relevant details. In the case of iron, our mass is 20.2. Molar mass 56. This gives us 0 0.36. So we are going to continue and do the same for sulfur, oxygen, and water. So this gives us 0 0.36 in the case of sulfur, 1.44 in the case of oxygen, and 2.52 in the case of water. Now the last one mole ratio now for the mole ratio we are going to look at the four values that we obtained 0 0.36 1.44 and 2.52 which is the smallest one out of this 0 0.36 of course so we are going to divide all four values by 0 0.36 so in the case of iron and sulfur we're going to get one because we are dividing a number by itself oxygen gives us four water gives us seven so, the formula for this hydrated salt is as such. It has 7 moles of water of crystallization. Now, in case you're wondering, why did I place sulfur in front of oxygen? From the information we've been given, it starts out as iron, oxygen, sulfur, and water. But if you have sulfur and oxygen, that means this is either going to be iron sulfate or iron sulfide. In either case, in the formula, you know, in writing the formula, it's always the sulfur that precedes the oxygen. So, start with the sulfur. Now, we are ready to move on with the second part. 6.95 of the hydrated salt in air above, you know, the one whose formula we just determined, was dissolved in distilled water and the total volume made to 250 cubic centimeters solution. Calculate the concentration of the resulting salt solution in moles per liter, given that the molecular mass of the salt is 278. Now guys, I want to say something first regarding concentration. Concentration can either be given in grams per liter or in moles per liter. But when you are asked for the concentration in moles per liter, they are essentially asking for the molarity. So in this case, we need to determine the molarity. So we're going to use this formula. Molarity is given by mass in grams per liter over the molar mass. Do we know the molar mass? Oh, yes, we do. We have already been told that the molecular mass of the salt is 278. Okay, what about the mass in grams per liter? So with this, we need to know the mass of the salt that was dissolved in one liter, which is equivalent to a thousand cubic centimeters. So from the first sentence, 6.95 grams of the hydrated salt was dissolved in water and the volume made up to 250 cubic centimeters. So essentially, 6.95 grams was dissolved in 250 cubic centimeters. 
What about in one liter, which is equivalent to 1000 cubic centimeters? So we are going to cross multiply and that will give us 27.8 grams per liter. We are now ready. So to nabandika everything, molarity is given by the mass in grams per liter, which is 27.8, over the molar mass, which is 278. And this gives us a molarity of 0.1 m. And that is our final answer for part B. Moving on to the next question. 15 cubic centimeters of ethanoic acid with that formula was dissolved in water to make 500 cubic centimeters of solution. Calculate the concentration of solution in moles per liter. Guys, what did we say concentration in moles per liter refers to? The molarity. So over here we've been given a little bit of information. The RAMs of the elements of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And curiously, the density of ethanoic acid. So let's look at the question. If we want to find molarity, we can do so using this formula. And why? Because when it comes to the mass, we can calculate it. And when it comes to the molar mass, that is easy when we have the formula and the relative atomic mass. So let's start with the easy part, the molar mass. So this is simply the mass of one mole of ethanoic acid. So we are going to total up the sum of the RMs of the element. So what do we have here? Let's start with carbon. We have two carbon atoms, that and that. Hydrogen atoms, there are four of them, those and that. And oxygen, zikombili. So the RM of carbon is 12 by 2, the RM of hydrogen is 1 by 4, and the RM of oxygen is 16 by 2. Sum these up and we get a molar mass of 60 grams. Now, on to the next part of the formula, we need to find the grams that were dissolved in one liter. Do we know the mass of ethanoic acid? We don't. What information do we have about it? We know the volume and the density. And guys, can't we calculate mass using volume and density? Yes, we can. So the volume is 15 and the density is 1.05. If we multiply these two, we are going to get the mass of ethanoic acid that was dissolved to form 500 cubic centimeters of solution. That gives us a mass of 15.75 grams. We are not yet done. According to the equation, we need to find the mass that was dissolved in one liter, which is equivalent to 1000 cubic centimeters. What we have currently is the mass dissolved in 500 cubic centimeters. So what about in 1000? Cross multiply and we end up having the following mass. 31.5 grams dissolved in one liter. We are now ready. So as usual, bandika everything. Molarity is given by 31.5 over the molar mass 60. And the molarity for the ethanoic acid is 0.525 M. And there we have it. On to our last question. An unknown mass X of anhydrous potassium carbonate was dissolved in water and the solution made up to 200 cubic centimeters. 25 cubic centimeters of this solution required 18 cubic centimeters of 0.22 M nitric acid for complete neutralization. Determine the value of X. Okay, so we have the relative atomic masses of potassium, carbon, and oxygen. Now let's look at the information we have. So potassium carbonate of a certain mass X was dissolved in water and then this was made up to a solution whose volume was 200 cubic centimeters. Now, out of this, only 25 cubic centimeters was used in a reaction with nitric acid. Only 25 cubic centimeters. So what do we know of the nitric acid? We know its volume, which is 18 cubic centimeters. We also know its molarity, which is 0.22 m. Okay. Now, we need to find the value of X. Okay, so if we look at our equation, it's balanced. And from the equation, we can clearly see that the mole ratio is 2 is to 1. Two moles of nitric acid will react with one mole of potassium carbonate solution. Now, at this point, we need to find X grams. But as usual, we cannot go directly because the information that we've been provided regarding it is limited. So what we are going to do is... 
we are going to start and calculate the moles of nitric acid, move on to potassium carbonate, and then move backwards until finally we land at the beginning where we can get the x grams. So these are the following steps. Number one, determine the moles of nitric acid. And then using the mole ratio, we are going to determine the moles of potassium carbonate. Lastly, determine the mass of potassium carbonate in 200 cubic centimeters. Now let us start with our first step, determining the moles of nitric acid. Now this is going to be easy because we have the volume and the molarity and we are going to use that formula. So the molarity is 0.22 multiplied by 18 over 1000 gives us the mole of nitric acid as 0.00396 moles. Our next step, determining the moles of potassium carbonate using the mole ratio. What is our mole ratio? 2 is to 1. So 2 moles of nitric acid will react with 1 mole of potassium carbonate. But guys, if the actual number of moles of nitric acid are 0.00396, what would be the moles of potassium carbonate? So we are going to cross multiply this and this gives us 0.00198 moles as the moles of potassium carbonate that were present in 25 cubic centimeters. So these were the ones that were reacted with nitric acid. We are not yet done. Our next step is determining the mass of potassium carbonate in 25 cubic centimeters. Okay, so we know the moles. What about the mass of potassium carbonate in 25 cubic centimeters? This is easy. We are just going to use this formula of ours. So mass is given by moles multiplied by the molar mass. The molar mass, we can easily get that. So according to the formula, we have two potassium atoms, 39 by 2, plus one carbon atom, which has the RAM of 12. And lastly, we have three oxygen atoms, 16 by 3, giving us the molar mass of potassium carbonate as 138. So the mass is given by molar mass multiplied by moles. Our molar mass, 138. Our number of moles as such, and we get a mass of 0 0.27324 grams. Well, quite a mouthful. Now, guys, our very, very last step, I know I keep on saying that, but I'm serious. So this is the mass of potassium carbonate that was present in 25 cubic centimeters. You know, the one that was reacted with nitric acid. But remember what happened initially is that a certain mass of potassium carbonate was dissolved in water to form a solution of 200 cubic centimeters. Then out of this, only 25 was used in the reaction. Now we know the mass of potassium carbonate in 25. What about in 200? So this will give us a mass of 2.18592 grams. And we are done. We are done. So this was the mass of potassium carbonate that was initially dissolved to form a solution of 200 cubic centimeters. Guys, how do you feel at this point? Mumeiva, I'm expecting the answer to be yes, yes, and yes. Now, if you feel like you need more revision, let me know in the comment section and I'll get right on it. See you next time.